Good day, grade 8 learners! This is Teacher Dominica Noveda, your math teacher for today. Are you ready for our new lesson? If yes, I want you to find a comfortable place to watch and listen. Please bring with you your compendium of notes, modules, pen, and paper. Okay, let us begin. Today, we will discuss about postulates on triangle congruence, specifically SSS, SAS, and ASA congruence postulates. Many of us have seen twins, some of whom are identicals and others are not. What are the features of twins that characterize them as a twins? Is it necessary to show that all corresponding parts are congruent or is it enough to see only some of their features such as their faces and heights? In triangles, we have three sides and three angles, right? And it is not necessary to name all six pairs of congruent parts to say that two triangles are congruent. In fact, we only need to identify three pairs of congruent parts. Now, let us discuss one of the postulates on triangle congruence. We can say that if the three sides of a triangle are equal to three corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This condition is what we call the SSS or side-side-side congruence postulate. Now, we have here two triangles, triangle DEF and triangle MNO. Can you find out if the two triangles are congruent? Let me tell you. In triangle DEF and triangle MNO, side DE is equal to side MN. Side EF is equal to side NO. And side DF is equal to side MO. That is, their corresponding sides are equal. So, triangle DEF and triangle MNO are congruent triangles. Now, let's talk about triangle GHI and triangle JKL. Side GH is equal to side JK. And side HI is equal to side KL. But can you notice that side GI is not equal to side JL? Hence, SSS or side 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 congruence postulate is not applied. And so, we can say that triangle GHI is not congruent to triangle JKL. Let us apply this knowledge in some other triangles. Let's take this example. The given figure shows that side PQ is equal to side SR and side PR is equal to side SQ. Is triangle PQR congruent to triangle SRQ? In triangle PQR and triangle SRQ, side PQ is equal to side SR and side PR is equal to side SQ. We can also see that side QR is common to both triangles. We should remember that if the three sides of a triangle are equal to the three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Here, triangles are congruent based on SSS congruence postulate or side-side-side congruence postulate. Therefore, triangle PQR is congruent to triangle SRQ. Next example, if triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB, find the lengths of all sides of triangle DCB. 
Here, given that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DCB, we can say that ABC or triangle ABC is similar to triangle DCB. We know that when two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding parts are equal. Therefore, side AB is equal to side DC. And side AB is equal to 2.1 centimeters. Therefore, side DC will also have the same length as 2.1 centimeters. Side AC is equal to side DB. Side AC measures 3.7 centimeters. Therefore, side DB also measures 3.7 centimeters. And we have their common side, which is side BC, with the length of 2.3 centimeters. Thus, we have found all the lengths of the sides of triangle DCB. At this point, we can now move on to the next triangle congruence postulate. It says that under correspondence, two sides and the angle included between them of a triangle are equal to two corresponding sides and the angle included between them of another triangle. Then, the triangles are congruent. This congruence is known as SAS congruence postulate or side angle side congruence postulate. Here, two triangles are given. In triangle ABC, side AC is equal to 5.8 centimeters. Side AB is equal to 2.5 centimeters. And angle BAC is equal to 110 degrees. While in triangle MNO, side MO is equal to 5.8 centimeters. Side MN is equal to 2.5 centimeters. And angle NMO is equal to 110 degrees. Corresponding two sides and the included angle of triangle ABC is equal to triangle MNO. So, we can say that the two triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle MNO by SAS congruence postulate. Now, let us see these two triangles. In triangle ABC, Side AC is equal to 5.8 centimeters. Side AB is equal to 2.5 centimeters. And angle BAC is equal to 110 degrees. In triangle PQR, side PQ is equal to 5.8 centimeters. Side PR is equal to 2.5 centimeters. And angle PRQ is equal to 110 degrees. But these two triangles are not congruent. Can you tell the reason why? Yes, because of angle PRQ. It is not between the sides PQ and PR. Angle PRQ is not the included angle between the sides PQ and PR. Corresponding angle BAC and RPQ are not equal. Remember that under SAS or side angle side congruence postulate, two sides and the included angle between them of a triangle are equal to the corresponding sides and the angle included between them of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. In our example, corresponding angles are not equal. Therefore, triangle ABC and triangle MNO are not congruent. Let's have another example. 
And the given figure, identify if triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CBA. We can see in triangle ADC and triangle CBA that side CD is equal to side AB. Side AC is equal to side AC. And angle ACD is equal to angle CAB. You can see that two corresponding sides and the included angle between triangle ADC is equal to two corresponding sides and the included angle between triangle CBA. Hence, by SAS congruence postulate, we can say that triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CBA. At this point, we will discuss another congruence which is the ASA or the angle side angle congruence postulate. It says that if two angles and the included side of a triangle are equal to two corresponding angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Look at the two triangles. Triangle ABC has angle B which is 130 degrees. Angle C which is 30 degrees and side BC with the length of 2.5 cm. Similarly, in triangle MNO, we have angle O is equal to 130 degrees. Angle N is equal to 30 degrees. And the length of side ON is 2.5 cm. Since the two angles, angle B and angle C of triangle ABC and the included side BC are equal to the corresponding angles, angle O and angle N, and the included side ON of the second triangle M and O, then the triangles are congruent. If we place one triangle over the other, we will observe that they will cover each other completely and exactly. This verifies that they are congruent. Let us try another example. In here, we have triangle ABC with angle B which is 130 degrees. Angle C is equal to 30 degrees. And the length of the included side, BC, is equal to 2.5 centimeters. Similarly, in triangle PQR, angle Q measures 135 degrees. Angle R is equal to 30 degrees. And the included side, QR, is equal to 2.5 centimeters. Can we say that the two triangles are congruent? You're right, we cannot call them congruent triangles because angle C is equal to angle R. Side BC is equal to side QR. But angle B is not equal to angle Q. Which means we cannot apply the ASA or angle side angle congruence postulate. Therefore, triangle ABC and triangle PQR are not congruent. Even if you place one triangle over the other, no matter how well adjusted it is, they will not cover each other completely and exactly. This verifies that they are not congruent. Let's have another example. In the figure, the ray QS bisects angle PQR as well as angle PSR. Is triangle PQS congruent to triangle RQS? We are asked to find out if triangle PQS is congruent to triangle RQS. We are given that ray QS bisects angle PQR. We know that an angle bisector divides the angle into two equal parts. 
With this understanding, we can say that angle PQS is equal to angle RQS. Also, as given, ray QS also bisects angle PSR. Therefore, we can say that angle RSQ is equal to angle PSQ. Now, we can conclude that triangle PQS is congruent to triangle RQS. Given that angle PQS is equal to angle RQS because of the angle formed by the bisector, side QS is equal to itself since it is a common side of the two triangles. And angle PSQ is congruent to angle RSQ because it is a pair of angles formed by the bisector QS. Under ASA congruence postulate, the two triangles are congruent. And at this point, we are done on our discussion. Let's have a recap of what we have discussed. We have discussed three triangle congruence postulate. First is the SSS or side 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 congruence postulate. It states that if the three sides of a triangle are equal to three corresponding sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Next postulate says that under a correspondence, two sides and the angle included between them of a triangle are equal to two corresponding sides and the angle included between them of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. This congruence is known as SAS congruence postulate or side angle side congruence postulate. And lastly, ASA or the angle side angle congruence postulate. It says that if two angles and the included side of a triangle are equal to two corresponding angles and the included side of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. By now, you have understood the different triangle congruence postulates. It's time for your turn to answer. Let's have an activity. I want you to get your pen and paper. Just write the answer in each number. I will give you a few minutes to answer and afterwards, we will reveal the answers. Let's start. Tell whether the two triangles are congruent by using the markings shown. If so, which triangles are congruent? Justify by stating the congruence postulate used. Time is up. Let's check. Be honest and checking your answers. Did you get the answers correctly? If yes, I want you to give yourself a clap. If you got a low score, do not worry. I know you can do better when you answer your assessment. So that's all for today, my dear students. I hope you learned something today. Once again, this is Teacher Dominica Novida. Thank you for listening. Be safe and have a good day.